Awen couldn't remember feeling quite so warm, not in a long time. She almost felt safe, which was an odd feeling after all she'd been through. It was almost as if something held her in paternal arms like her father had when she was a child. It reminded her of when she'd woken up in this same room no more than two weeks ago to Tyler's soothing presence. What time is it? She asked, not bothering to check if anyone else was actually in the room with her. She remembered pounding rain and an immense pressure against her mind and body. Had the others made it up to the village? She found she couldn't help but wonder as she slid bare feet out from under the quilt. The last thing she recalled was staring up at Kern's face before Courtney had helped her to bed. There was something wrong with the dragon's eyes, she decided. His eyes didn't seem quite as bright as before. Something wrong with him? But that wasn't possible, she decided. He was near him. Nothing could get him down. Finding a robe, she pulled it on and slipped out into the hallway. Little activity filled the vast corridor, even though her mind told her there should be more. Not sure what to expect, Amon made her way to the council chamber. She paused at the sound of voices discussing different strategies, including Tyler and Kern. Why hadn't they awakened her earlier? Tyler looked up upon sensing her presence. He'd opted to use his mortal form for this meeting, mostly because it seemed to make the other mortals more comfortable. Morning, he greeted. If anyone wanted to be technical, it was still before the hour of noon, though not by much. When he'd first arrived in the Dragon City, he checked in on her, and then decided to let her rest. He had no idea how much all her recent activities had taken out of her, but he guessed it had to be more than she cared to admit. Awen trailed towards the vast central table where a map of the area lay out for inspection. You didn't call for me. She stated as she ran one hand through her somewhat tangled hair. Why? She snuck a glance over at Kern, noting he looked nowhere near as tired as he had the night before. Maybe she'd only imagined it. Leslie moved into view from behind Walter and Courtney. Don't blame him, she said. I remember my days as a young mage, and suggested he let you sleep as long as you would. I know how great effort can set a person back. Since you are the Kada, we will need your strength when the Revenant arrives. That's not for you to decide, Awen protested, slapping her palms against the stone surface, the sleeves of her robe flapping. It's not for any of you to decide. She swept her gaze around the table, over dragons and mortals alike. Either I'm the Kaida, or I'm just a puppet to parade around when convenient. Make up your minds. Courtney looked chagrined as she turned her face towards the ground. She wasn't sure why she did it, but her cheeks burned all the same. But part of her knew she should have requested for the others to wait. She was Amon's friend, and yet had left her out of the current proceedings. I'm sorry, Courtney mouthed, not sure if Armin saw her. We all know you're not a fighter, Tyler explained as he moved to put his arms around her shoulders. I didn't think you needed to be a part of the battle plans. I'm sorry. Amon gave him a look as she shrugged his hands from her shoulders and stuffed her hands into her pockets, her muscles <sighs> taut. Just because I'm not like the rest of you doesn't mean you get to decide if I'm part of this or not. I, I didn't get a say in the matter back when I first found out about all of this craziness. Now, you don't get a say about me being here. It's my right, and I'm not going to let you take that away from me. The walker gave a knowing smile as she turned to Walter. Oh, feisty. She said out of the corner of her mouth, nudging Walter as she did. Didn't see that coming. Walter <laughs> chuckled. <laughs> I tell you, I'm sure you'll find on when full of surprises. <laughs> but, to be honest, it's possible her mother got it wrong. Yeah, she's different, but... That doesn't mean she can't defend herself. She just does it in other ways. Callum turned his silver-green head towards Anwen, giving her a calculating stare. The wheels in his head turned. Something must have changed, he mused. This girl hadn't taken these kinds of liberties only a week ago. He bowed his head in apology. Of course. You are right. He agreed. It was wrong of us to exclude you. Courtney moved over to Anwen's side, grabbing her by the arm. Can I talk to you for a minute? She asked in a strained voice as she started pulling her friend out of the room. Anwen went with only token resistance, not even looking back to see what the others were doing. Once they were out in a quiet corner, she turned to face her friend. What? Please don't tell me you're going to scold me for that. You know they should have included me in their meeting. The blonde mage stared at her friend as she shook her head. Onwen, 
This isn't like you. Did something happen while you were off looking for the other mages? Talk to me. She refrained from grabbing Anwen again. Sure, she wouldn't appreciate it. I thought we were friends. Anwen slumped against the nearest wall, pulling her palms down her face. Her eyes pricked and her throat felt tight so she closed her eyes. She shook her head, not sure what to say. Come on. What's going on? Courtney encouraged. For whatever reason, you seem unable to tell Tyler. Come on. You know I'm here for you. Please. This time she reached out a hesitant hand and placed it on Anwen's shoulder. The Kata felt a shudder run through her. She didn't want to break down. Not here. Not now. Not in front of Courtney. She was supposed to be strong. Everyone expected her to be strong. To be something she wasn't. Well, she'd tried. Maybe she'd tried too hard. A sob broke out from between her lips and she slid to the ground, tears hitting her bare feet. Courtney moved downward with her, her eyes going wide at this unexpected development. She pulled Anwen into her arms as they both sat on the floor. Oh, Anwen, what happened? Anwen sobbed in her arms, her entire body trembling with emotion. I can't! She gasped. I just can't. I talked to Mulder about this earlier, but it's not getting any easier. I really don't think I can keep this up. Why does everyone keep expecting me to do great things? First there was Tyler, then you guys, and then there was my mom even after her death. Walter was okay with things, but then Leslie was all like, who you are, who you say you are. Why can't it be enough for me to be me? Why do you have to be something? Do something that no one else can do. Okay, it's okay. Courtney soothed as she ran one hand through Hunley's tangled hair. Her fingers caught on a snarl and she stopped. Leaving her hand next to Kata's ear, she pulled her closer. You don't have to do anything. They can all go jump off a cliff or something. It's too much for one person to handle, and you and I both know it. And trying seems to be killing you. You can walk away from this. Silence dropped over the two. It was only punctuated by Anwen's continued sobs as she tried to come to grips with everyone. She'd thought she had with Walter's revelation about once being married. She'd thought his words had been enough to cover the wound that had torn her chest open. But it hadn't. It was like putting a band-aid over a gunshot wound. It didn't even begin to cover things, let alone stop the bleeding. I I feel like I'm dying inside trying to be what everyone expects. Me to be. Alan confessed. I can't even learn from my own mother. I don't know if I deserve to. She was something I never will be, can't be. Even though I didn't take the time to get to know her very well, I can't help but think about the lost opportunities. It isn't fair. Courtney let her get it all out. She never had to deal with what her friend was dealing with now. She still had both of her parents and could only imagine the grief she kept bottled up inside. Her experience as a stand-in for the Kata had likely only given her a taste of the pressure Anwen felt. And if what she'd gone through had pushed her to the limit, she knew Anwen had to feel crushed under the weight of it. Margot was right. Anwen wasn't like that. She wasn't meant for the offensive. But she'd also gotten it wrong about other things as well. Tyler had told them the basics of what had happened while they were away, and that realization had only cemented the idea in Courtney's mind. Anwen was so far out of her element, so underprepared that it wasn't even funny. No wonder she felt overwhelmed. And to finally admit that took a great deal of courage. It was more courage than Courtney thought she could muster. But it was also undeniable that Anwen was something outside any of their comprehensions. She was so beyond what any of them knew, even the dragons. And even though they didn't consciously try to put their expectations on her, it still amounted to the same thing. She could feel it. Courtney knew they looked to her as either some kind of savior or a catalyst. And Anwen was definitely not ready for that. She needed time to be a 17-year-old girl who'd only recently lost her mother. And it wasn't happening. Can I ask you a question? Courtney hazarded when she thought Anwen had calmed down enough to be reasonable. All these expectations, are they what you feel everyone is putting on you? Or are you the one putting them on yourself? Anwen looked up at that, 
not sure how to process it. What do you mean? She asked. She rubbed out the tears, trying to scrub them from her eyes. Corny inclined her head to one side, the corners of her lips moving in opposite directions. What I mean is, do you think everyone is expecting a lot out of you? Or is it that you think they are, and because you think that, you expect even more from yourself? They want a perfect answer. You seek perfection to give it to them, trying to become what you think they want you to be. Well, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? Have you even taken a moment to consider that? I know Tyler would move heaven and earth for you if you'd let him. You don't have to carry it all on your own. Armin hesitated, her eyes opening wide as she thought about it. Ever since she'd arrived, every moment, she'd been thrown from one point to the other. She hadn't understood at the time, though she had a better idea of why now. The way she'd seen to survive all that was to embrace what she thought everyone wanted. She'd been obedient to the point of sacrificing herself. Did you mean it when you said I don't have to do this? Arwen looked hopeful, like a dying man in the desert who'd been handed a canteen of water. Both corners of Courtney's lips turned up this time. Yeah, I did. Courtney confirmed, removing her hands from Arwen's shoulders so they could sit side by side. Who expects a teenager to be able to handle this stuff? I mean, come on. We're still learning about who we are. And that's supposed to continue on until we're like, what, in our mid-twenties? Maybe later? Do you even know anyone who's so sure of themselves that they never make mistakes? Anyone who can do everything everyone's expecting them to do? It's not realistic. No one can do that. I went bit the inside of her lip, thinking about that. It was a lot to ask of anyone. But now that she thought about it, Had anyone actually said she had to do all this? Yes, there were those silly prophecies, but wasn't she the pilot of her own destiny? Since when did others get to make all the rules? Maybe that's what she'd tried to express when she'd gone in there, all bothered about being left out. It was possible all she'd wanted them to tell her was exactly what Courtney had, that it was okay to take a step back and get her bearings. Why did it all have to rest on her shoulders anyway? Courtney nodded. Why don't you decide what you want to do instead? Think it through and we'll do whatever you want. Okay? The Cada nodded, looking more than thoughtful as she turned her head to face the far wall. Exactly what was she trying to do? Or felt like people were trying to push on her? Knowing that would help sort it all out. Just remember who you are. You are the last keykeeper. You are my daughter. And somewhere out there is a dragon who is madly in love with you. Her mother's words echoed in her mind. For the moment, she didn't actually need to do anything about being a keykeeper, let alone the master keykeeper. That point was moot. Of course, once things got down to it, she'd have to make sure they sealed the mountain against attack. She could accept that, Arwen decided. It was one aspect of herself that made sense. Her last name even alluded to it, if she paused to think about it. Porter meant one who guards the door, more or less. The real problem lay with her identity as the Kata. She still didn't know what all that meant. All she knew was that it opened a whole other can of worms she wasn't sure she wanted to deal with. The Kata, the original one, was the literal offspring of Kern and a mortal woman. Okay, that was easy enough. The fact that their child had draconic powers complicated things a little. From that union had come a whole society of dragon mages, all with powers of varying degrees, and the person who brought order to that was the Kata. Well, Awen hadn't done a great job of bringing order. At least she didn't think she had. The fact that she seemed to have not only the power of her birthright, but access to the wisdom of those who came before her was unnerving. That was enough to make anyone question their sanity, especially if they weren't used to the idea. But that wasn't the real problem. If she was being truthful, the real problem was that everything seemed to be pushing her to the brink of something. She wasn't sure what yet. The fact that 
She'd been told she had to heal some kind of breach in time didn't help matters. They seemed to expect her to be some kind of bridge, and in a way she'd managed to not break so far. Okay, who was she kidding? She wouldn't be where she was now sitting in a stone hallway with Courtney if something hadn't broken. Most people would break after having only gone through a fraction of what she had. So why was she doing it? Was it really because she had no control over her destiny? Or was the answer so much bigger than any of that? What was she missing? When I was a child... Courtney spoke up. I wasn't sure about who I was. To be honest, I'm still not. I knew I was a mage, but I don't think I ever understood what all that meant. Until I met you. Alwyn let out a snort, her elbows resting on her knees. <sighs> I'm not special. She countered. Courtney shook her head. See, that's where I have to disagree. You accepted me exactly as I was. And that's something no one had done before. Well, except for my parents. What kid actually believes their parents? She gave Alwyn a knowing look. It's almost hardwired into us not to believe them. Especially when we hit puberty. Am I right? After all, what do they know? <laughs> she laughed. The blonde looked down at her feet. Her shoes were scuffed and in need of replacing, but she didn't care. For me, growing up was always about trying to figure out how I fit in. When I didn't seem able to do that, I thrust myself out there. I'm sure Tyler can attest to that. And in all the wrong ways, I had every boy wrapped around my little finger. Well, except for Tyler and Joseph. She trailed off. The point of the matter is you have to discover who you are for you, not for anyone else. They're not walking in your shoes. They don't know what goes on inside your head. Sure, they have expectations and all that, but that's more a reflection of their dreams and desires. Courtney turned to face Alwyn full on. But the most important question is what do you want? Because it's not about them. It's about you. Anwen's eyes glistened with more unshed tears as she hugged her arms around her chest. I want my dad to be proud of me. She admitted. That's all I ever wanted. To always be his little girl. Courtney leaned her head against Anwen's shoulder. You know, I'm sure he would be proud of you. More than proud of you. I mean, how many people can say they opened a freaking mountain? How many can say they woke an entire horde of dragons from a spell-induced slumber? And how many people can say they found a lost village of mages and brought them home again? Not many, I'd wager. A smile tugged at the corners of Anwen's lips. Yeah, I guess. She moved her head to lean more comfortably against Courtney's. Funny thing is... Courtney continued. You didn't do anything too crazy. Well... Aside from escaping a mudslide, showing up a more mature mage, averting a flash flood, you know, kitty stuff. Speaking of which, why did you do all that? Owen pursed her lips as she thought about it. If she was being honest with herself, she hadn't done it out of any conscious thought. But it seemed like the right thing to do. No one had told her to do any of that, one way or the other. She'd taken the initiative and done it. Was that the answer? To do things on her terms? Throwing aside the expectations of everyone else? From everything she'd heard from Tyler and the others, there hadn't been any other quite like her. The lines of Kata and Porter had never crossed before. That meant she was outside anything anyone had any right to expect. And what exactly did they expect from her anyway? Or was she projecting what she thought they were expecting from her? Yes, there were some things. But wasn't she putting more on herself based off of what others said and did than what she actually had to do? Walter had been right when he told her to do her best with what she had. The next question then was, what did she have? She wasn't a natural leader, not like her mother. Of course, her mother had presented the only idea of what the Kata was that she knew. But that was her mom, not her. And of course there were the initial reactions everyone had to her heritage. Those had given her the idea she had to be someone who was almost... deity. Yet Kern never treated her like a god. 
It was more like a favored daughter. And Tyler hadn't tried to push her to do what the others expected her to do. Had he? Even though he'd impressed upon her the gravity of her position, he only tried to help her understand her gift. We each have a hand to play. Arwen mused as she twiddled her fingers. And when she paused to think about it even more, she recalled something her father had once told her. She'd been about five at the time, and the subject of who led the family came out. She'd never forget what he'd said to her. Your mom and I both lead the family, just in different ways. Your mom is the one who easily sits in the limelight, taking charge. And I'm the one who quietly leads from the ranks, unsung and hardly noticed by society. She'd protested at that, of course, because she'd always thought the world of her father. But now she had to admit he was right. She couldn't help but realize there were times her mother led their family with a sense of calm she knew she couldn't feel. She'd first noticed it after her father's death. It was almost as if her mother had worn a mask to keep the grief from being seen. She'd never cried in front of her daughter, even though Amma knew she suffered. Was that what it truly meant to be a leader? To be willing to shoulder the responsibility? To pretend all was well when things weren't. To bolster up those around you even when everything else was falling apart. In the end, wasn't that what she'd done with her entire life? She wasn't the kind of person who led from the limelight, though. But she could be the kind of leader her father was. The kind who led from within the ranks. Giving hope and support where none might otherwise be had. No fanfare, nothing distinguishing her from the ranks other than her presence. Slowly, Amwen got to her feet, her expression thoughtful as the ideas cemented in place. It wasn't about what the others expected of her. It was about what she was willing and able to give. She wasn't sure what all she could give, but what she had she was more than willing to share. And if that meant shattering their expectations and handing them back to them all packaged with a shiny bow, well, that's what she'd have to do. Because she wasn't like her mother. But she could be like her father. Because that was how she naturally was, anyway. Onwin? Courtney called out as her friend began heading back towards the council chambers. She moved to her feet and followed after her, not sure what thoughts were going through her friend's head. It was obvious she'd had some kind of epiphany though she wasn't sure where it led. The Kata paced her way back to the waiting men and women inside. She had an odd kind of expression as she rejoined them at the stone table. I... I want to apologize. She said after all eyes turned her way. For my outburst a little while ago. I mean, I... I wasn't thinking. But now that I'm here, there are some things I want to have cleared up. Kern inclined his scaled head. It would seem you have had a clarity of thought, little dragon. What do you wish to ask us? A sense of shyness settled over Armin as she shuffled her feet. It was so easy to go back to old habits, but she needed to do this for herself. All those gathered had a lot more experience than she did, if only life experience. But she knew it was so much more than that. Leslie had experience leading her people. Tyler, Kern, and Callum had similar. Walter had his experience in a military capacity, and even Courtney knew more about being a mage than she did. It was enough to intimidate most normal people. The Kata took in a deep breath as she contemplated each individual in the room. I wondered... She paused, making sure this was what she wanted, but she needed. I wanted to know what all your definitions of the Kaida are and why. Tyler frowned as he looked around the table. That was the last thing he'd expected from her though he supposed it wasn't unwarranted. I already told you mine, he said. Lakeda is the one who inherits the full power of the dragon mage, destined to lead and guide them. Leslie looked somewhat uncomfortable when Anwen turned her gaze towards her. Hmm. I suppose that for me, the Keda is one who will lead us into battle with a show of great strength and fortitude. She is supposed to lead her people with honor and courage. Courtney felt mild surprise when Anwen looked her way. Her throat felt dry after her long discussion with her, only to be called into the spotlight once more. Um, well, I guess I'll represent what the mages of the village have always thought. 
It's been our tradition that the Keda is the epitome of what a mage is and stands for. She's someone of great power and ability. I guess most villagers' idea of what she's supposed to be stemmed from what Madame Millard was. She was strong-willed, skilled in her craft, and able to defeat anyone who stood in her way. You already know my thoughts on the matter. Walter shoved his hands into his pockets as he rocked back on his heels. Uh, well, you know, honestly, uh, I have no real idea on the subject. I only know what I've heard or what I read, so I don't think my thoughts on that count. The near him settled his body in a relaxed position. I believe I understand why Anwen has asked this of everyone. He looked each member around the table in the eye. A few looked away. I am sure you all know how the first Kada came into being. As a first mage, she became the perfect union between dragon and mortal. And in that right, she was meant to become a bridge between the two. The creation of the mages from that line is only a happy consequence. You are neither more nor less important than your mortal or draconic counterparts. One of the mortal, one of the stone. One of the dragons shall be born, a fair little dragon, keeper of the keys, all to mend, all to set free, ere the darkness come, all to join or all shall die, the past, the present, all must align or the light be forever gone. All eyes returned to Amun as she finished reciting a prophecy. What if? She hazarded. What if when it says all, it doesn't mean just me? What if it means everyone? Everyone to mend, everyone to join, or everyone shall die. Everyone must align or the light be gone. As Walter told me, we all have our part to play. Mine is not to lead you in the front lines, but to work beside you in the trenches. I leave the former to those with more experience in those kinds of things, because that's not who I am, it's who you all are. Silence filled the chamber as her words hit home. Leslie began clapping. Her expression a little shocked, but full of approval. That's the most honest thing I've heard in a long time. She stated. And even though you showed great power back in my village, I think you're right. Kern glanced towards everyone gathered. A hint of a smile tilted up the corners of his lips. We must all play to our strengths. He agreed. Which is why I feel it wise to suggest the following. The walker should lead those mages who have looked to her all these years. Courtney Willis should lead those she has trained in this past week. Walter Watkins. He gave the veteran a knowing look. You I am not sure where to place, but I trust the accounts of your skills. It may be best to leave you as a random berserker. Yes, I like that idea. Callum turned to his leader. I request I be placed in such a position that I may guard the gates. He said. My skills should allow me to act as a last resort, to block them from any enemy that, and I can make sure no one will enter until the battle is over and we have guaranteed victory. Tyler couldn't help but look surprised at his brother's announcement, realizing what it meant. Under no circumstances would he allow anyone near the gates once the battle started, not even Anwen. At least that's what it sounded like he wanted to do. It also meant that if Anwen did approach the gates, he would have permission to end her life in the name of protecting Tarragon. She wouldn't even need to have the intent to enter. Her presence alone put her in jeopardy. Are you sure that's wise? He asked, voicing his misgivings. Bright teeth flashed as Callum arched his neck. It would be better to seal away the heart of the mountain than to allow the revenants access to it. And if that means I need to destroy the only means of returning to our home, then so be it. The near him placed his hands on the stone table. Peace, my children. It need not come to that. He gave Callum a look. You will not destroy the last of the key keepers. He ordered. No matter what the circumstances, you may, if necessary, imprison her or otherwise incapacitate her, if necessary. But you will not destroy her. I will not allow it. As you wish. Callum agreed, bowing his sinuous neck. I take, I have your leave to guard the gates then? Kern nodded. You have of those conditions I stipulated. As for you, Damon, I charge you to protect the Cader as best as you can. But to first and foremost, protect your people. You will fight with the other dragons. Anvan. He looked her in the eye. You have my leave to fight in the trenches. But if you find yourself endangered in any way, 
You are to fall back to the gate where Callum will protect you. Tyler started at that, but held his peace. While he was indeed charged with the protection of Arwen, he knew his duty first lay with his people. Callum would best be able to protect Arwen if she were to truly come into any danger. And if he did not, Callum would answer to him, even if he had to haunt him for eternity. Very well. He agreed. Courtney brushed her hands against her pants. Well, if that's all settled, I'd like to get back to the other mages and train. Yesterday's ring set us back a little, and I want to make up for that. Kern gave his permission for her to leave. We best all prepare, he stated. I fear the revenants will soon breach the shield, if they haven't already. And from there, only the desert will slow them down. Though I feel it will be better listen. We do not have any more time. The others looked solemnly as Courtney left the room. Their waiting was just about over. Whatever plans each group had, they needed to be put in motion, if they weren't already.